Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to 2024. Hope everybody had a good new year. Some people are probably still recuperating from new year. Um, I was talking with Daryl about his Penn State hat, and I said, Daryl, I thought that'd be in mothballs, and he said that uh, he had an eagle's hat, and it was the lesser of two eagles. <laughs> so he didn't know what to do. Um, so welcome today. Uh, got a lot of uh, stuff to cover for those on Zoom. Welcome. And before we get started, this is kind of a um, something I was not planning on. I see on our sh our screen up there that somebody by the name of Janice Kennard is joining us this morning. My goodness. So I'm going to turn this around and wave at Janice. Well done. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully that her waving doesn't sap her energy. So uh, as I said, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. There's a lot that has been happening uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I got a text from Brent yesterday who I thought was going to go ballistic, <laughs> not at me, but just in at, at life in general, right, Brenda? Uh, so we're going to address some of the things that Brenda brought up in her text to me at some point in, in today's meeting. So first up today is Dan and James. I think Dan is going to handle this. Um, and Dan, the microphone's right up here on the corner. All right. Happy New, New Year, everyone. Uh, as always, on behalf of James and myself, uh, we thank you for your continued support. So just a couple of promos I want to review as far as some things and incentives uh, that Home Sale Mortgage offers. Uh, the first is our Hometown Heroes program. Uh, this is a $500 closing cost credit we offer to first responders. Um, there's a lot of different programs out there in the marketplace. Uh, there is a frontline heroes program. There's a first responder program. They're all kind of the same thing ultimately. Um, so this is a $500 credit again that we offer for individuals that um, fit any one of these particular categories. Some agents are matching this again, that's kind of up to you. And if it's something you want to do and put together uh, a matching program, we can do a specific marketing piece for you uh, regarding this. So reach out to either James or myself if you want to do uh, some type of co-branded thing, or if you would just like flyers, um, either PDF copies or digital flyer, or sorry, I guess PDF would be digital, but or a paper copy, uh, reach out to James or myself and we'll be happy to provide those for you. Um, if someone doesn't fall into this category as far as the hometown heroes, we are offering a partnership credit as well. Again, that is a $500 credit. This is good through June 30th of 2024 and we can provide these coupons for you as well again digital format or a hard copy uh, we can put your information on there as law as well as our information and you're welcome to hand these out uh, to clients and the thing i want to point out is these programs cannot be combined so it's either or um, and lastly we still have our buy now refi later promo going on for closings through the end of this month. Uh, again, um, anyone refinancing, we will um, provide a 1% loan amount credit up to $3,000 for the refinance. Um, that's covering roughly 60% of the refinance costs, um, case by case basis, obviously, depending on the loan amount. But again, a significant credit and incentive to be able to offer a client if they're concerned about um, refinancing and cost of that. If you have any questions on any of these particular promotions, feel free to reach out to James or myself. We'd be happy to provide more information. Uh, Dan, just one question on the, on the incentives that you're talking about, the getting credits and things like that. How does that impact, if any, with seller assistance and what you can get from a seller? So, I mean, any type of credits, whether seller assist or any lender credits, cannot exceed the total closing costs. So the only time this would probably be an issue is if someone was getting like the full 6% seller assist. Obviously, they may not be able to use every dollar of the seller assist and our credit, but 
I can't tell you the last time I saw a, a 6% seller cyst. <laughs> <laughs> but it does not count as a concession. So in other words, in a situation where somebody is getting, say, 3% seller assist, because I have seen a few of those, the lender credit does not impact the 3% seller assist. Okay. Because again, the closing costs would most likely exceed the 3% plus the credit that we're offering as well. Gotcha. Thank All you. Right. All right. And title up next. Yep. Oh. You just yes. want to say Do you have hi? a question? Yeah, my question was is it, is it legal for us to be giving money to the buyer? You had mentioned we come alongside it instead of $500. It's if this was not legal, we would not be doing it. Well, number one, it sounds, it just sounds great to me. <laughs> no, um, I'm sure all this stuff has been looked at, uh, T's crossed, I's dotted, uh, through our legal department. So, probably because it's through the mortgage company, more than likely. Yeah, Wait, you talked about the agent giving 500, yeah. So, that's not yeah. that's not before. And hold on, can you get the Microphone, because people on Zoom can't hear you, sir. Mind my slippers, sorry. Um, so yes, yeah, we've had it come up where uh, I've had agents giving a credit to um, the buyer, and as long as you have the proper paperwork, it can actually get listed on the settlement sheet. Uh, buyer credit from agent, and as long as the lender knows about it, we can do it. It's you just need to have the right documentation that you as the buyer or as the agent have agreed to give your buyer $500 out of your commission or whatever it may be. And I've listed it on settlement sheets multiple times. So it's not a problem, at least from our end. I don't know. As long as you have the paperwork, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. I mean, it's probably falls into just like the reduced commission category. Cause I mean, obviously there's agents that have reduced their commission to save a deal in some situations and that's not illegal to my knowledge. So. Yeah. And the the key word or words that you said there is as long as the lender it's disclosed to the lender correct yeah. right. so um we would put it on the settlement like for example if you're giving your client 500 bucks we collect your commission like normal like the normal three percent and then on the first page of the or the credit section of the settlement sheet you would see uh buyer credit from agent from berkshire hathaway five hundred dollars just like it would li be listed if you had seller assist or something like that and then when you turn your check in to Charlene, your commission would check would be $500 less. That way you don't have to write a check or anything like that. It would all be taken care of internally. Um, I just think, I don't know if that's on like the buyer's agent compensation form that they would agree to do that, or I don't know where the agent would actually usually, list usually, that. Usually, uh, as Dan mentioned, it's, it's to try to keep a transaction together and it usually occurs at the end. And each case is different depending okay. upon the circumstance. So if you run into that, I would say talk with Tom about which paper to get signed and Dan or James to make sure that it's acceptable for the lender for you to actually do that. But it is completely legitimate as long as the right paperwork, we've done it. Okay, thank you. I did have something to say. There you go. Look at me go. All right. uh, and I want to clarify one thing that, that um, Sarah said, because it's going to come up later on. There is no such thing as a normal 3% commission, okay? No such thing as a normal 3% commission. Uh, that's what this na nationwide lawsuit is all about, to be frank, um, that we're not colluding with each other. So don't anybody touch or collude with anybody during the meeting here. Okay. Um, James is up next with Home Sale Insurance. Hand out here. I'll start here. Yep. Okay. So today's so today's topic would be uh, life insurance, basically. And first of all, thank you for all your referrals back in uh, twenty three. Uh, we had a pretty good year, I would say, considering the circumstances. We were over our twenty percent goal uh, for all the transactions that you guys sold, all the real estate transactions, we were just a bit over 20%. So that's good. So thank you for that. Um, and then this slide will just be some quick on life insurance about how often you should re review everything. Um, changing situations, basically. So one of them would be a, a housing situation change. Uh, yesterday, I actually got a referral from somebody. She was 
getting divorced from her husband, moving into a new house. She said, yep, I got a kid. This is a good opportunity to look at it. Now, I, I don't actually do this part of it. I would refer you to um, another of our agents at Home Sale Insurance, but we he, he can certainly take a look at it for you. And if any, anybody here wants to take a look at it as well, too, that, that's an option as well. Just let me know and I can get you over to him. Um, and there's a couple other, other, well, there's the divorce situation right there as well, too. There's a couple other situations, any, any sort of changes, health, family size, beneficiary changes. That might be a good time to, to look at life insurance for you. Anything else? Um, no, I also have on this, uh, this, uh, note here that, uh, uh, Life insurance through a workplace usually stops when you stop working there. And it, the insurance might not be as expensive as you think as well, too. So, you know, if you if you want to want to take a look at it, just let me know. I can get you in touch with uh, Ryan Bowman at our agency who does that. So and any questions or anything else, just let me know. Thank you, James. I appreciate it. Uh, up next is one of our VIP vendors, uh, Ben Bodner, am I saying that correct? Yeah, ben? you got okay. it. Most and, people watch it. Yeah. Great. And uh, once again, the microphone is right there. That's for the benefit of the people on Zoom. Perfect. Hey. Hello, Zoom people. How's it going? I'm Ben, uh, Vincent Morgan Real Estate Media. Uh, shoot photos, videos, 3D tours, floor plans, drone aerials, anything you need to market your real estate listing, we do. Uh, so we're really much a, a one-stop shop. Um, one of the things that uh, makes us different is a lot of our customers say that we really excel with video. Uh, people love our, our our video product for for listings. Um, another thing that makes us different is we have online scheduling. Um, so if you guys are up at three in the morning, like some realtors are, uh, you guys can book a photo shoot on our website. Or what, another thing is we also have a mobile app as well, which makes us really unique. Um, so you can go to the, the Apple store um, or the Google Play store and download our app called Vincent and Morgan. Um, and you can book right on right on your phone right there. It's super easy. Um, and we have currently we have two photographers on our team. It's myself and another photographer, Hannah. Um, so we have multiple schedules to fill. Um, yeah, right there. He just pulled some <laughs> some screenshots from my website. So there's uh, we you know, we do pretty much all the services that any other photographer would do. But like I said, the online scheduling mm -hmm. uh, makes it super, uh, super easy. And so does the mobile app. Um, yeah, it's as simple. It's as simple as going online, booking the photo shoot. We come and shoot your listing and then we deliver everything within 24 hours. So, um, do we have any questions? Oh, we serve uh, Lancaster and surrounding counties. So I'm, I'm right here in Lancaster. I specifically live in Mannheim. So, uh, what kind of questions do we have for photographer? Any questions for Van? Any questions? I, <clears throat> well, uh, so not with the, I was just going to say, uh, <laughs> they, they have a really, really good website. Uh, and Ben and I conversed back and forth uh, prior to the meeting. For me to get in and out of websites here, it's really, really difficult to do. I'm gonna go back a screen or two here. Um, that is their website there. And that's not a mistake. It's .co, not com. <clears throat> they have some really, really great uh, examples um, of all the different types of uh, from the Matterport tours to, um, I particularly like the uh, the dusk ones where they can shoot a, a picture during the daytime and turn it into, looks like you shot it in, in the evening. A lot of really neat stuff on there. So I would encourage you, hop on the website, take, take a look at some of the uh, work that, that Ben and his group have done. Yeah, and we're doing a lot of like real style videos as well. Um, so like Instagram reels, TikTok, like the vertical style videos, a lot of realtors are are um, utilizing those. Um, so we've been doing a lot, a lot of those for for customers. Mm -hmm. um, and to your point on the the uh, virtual twilights. Mm -hmm. So we actually don't offer twilight photos. Um, it costs, you know, you too much money where we can just go and just use the existing daytime images and just edit them and post. And honestly, I think they look better half the time anyway, because you're not always going to get that beautiful pink sky at night. You know, sometimes it's just like cloudy and it just doesn't even look good. So we do we do the the virtual um, the virtual twilight. So, yeah, yeah, they really look sharp. So awesome. And if you're looking for examples, I have plenty of examples on the website. Um, you just go to our portfolio. 
uh, tab right on there. Oh, and uh, the biggest thing is uh, I have a promo code I wrote down on, on the handout, some business cards. I am offering a free photo shoot to first time customers. So if you've never used me before, it's a good, uh, uh, it's a good way to just test out the services and, and see how, see how you, you like us. So. Okay. Oh, and I have some free koozies if you guys want some koozies. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can lay that right awesome. on the corner, right there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Ben. We appreciate you being here this morning. Um, once again, he's going to hand out business cards. I um, invited, just like I do, all our VIP vendors if they'd like to stay afterwards to uh, listen to the balance of the meeting. And Ben, to his credit, said, "I am real busy with photo shoots, so he's going to be taken off." Um, but do keep going here. There we go. So, uh, in the month of December, uh, I gotta hand it, I gotta hand it to you guys. A lot of agents, teams, companies, they kind of take off during the months of December. That has not been the case. We had more people, more teams in December qualify or peak performers than ever, ever. Wow. It was really uh, something to look at. When it came across, when it came across my email, I was very impressed. Um, just want to mention people by name here: Susan Allison, Ken Kirchhoff, Eric Schneider, Misha Sams, Logan Hutton, Carol Kirkner, who is in our presence. Carol, um, Mark Will team, the Wendell Heward team. Yeah. Tyler Stoltz team, Lisa Naples team, Mark Thudium team, Mark Reber team, Tom Risser group, Bob Rose team, congratulations Bob Rose team, Patrick Trimble team, Dave Lowry team, Daryl Hurst who is front and center, front and center, uh, Nancy Sarley team and the Craig Hartramp team. So congratulations to everybody uh, on a fantastic December. I know I got some of the numbers in uh, we definitely exceeded our goals in December. So uh, my hat's off to everybody. Okay. <clears throat> a couple of reminders for you. The January 2024 kickoff is coming up on January 17th. Uh, it's going to be held at Spooky Nook. Uh, if you haven't registered for this, you do need to register for it. I will send out um, with the uh, stuff today for the meeting. I will send the link out if you have not registered for that. From eight to nine, it's kind of like a social hour. There'll be some stuff to eat. Uh, from nine to 11 is gonna be the presentation. What's really neat about this is Christy Budnick, who is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway uh, Home Services, she is going to be there live with us. So um, she doesn't go to a lot of these things, but she chose to be with us. So I'm really looking forward to see what she has to say in addition to what Rod has to say. Yeah, and she's a really great speaker. And she is. She's very dynamic, very positive. Um, love every time I see her. Yeah, Carol. I don't think it, it is. It was last year. Um, if you can't make that date, you want to see me. It's being held in two other locations at different times. Um, you may have to travel a little bit, okay. but it, it is possible. Okay. Uh, by the way, for those on Zoom, Carol's question was, is it going to be recorded? And I said, I don't think so. Okay. Um, the 2024 awards gala, once again, you do need to register for this. I will send out a link. If you want more information on this event, go to homesale.com, homesale awards gala. I'm sure you'll see, I haven't been on there yet, but I'm sure you'll see pictures from last year and some of the things that are coming up that are gonna be at this year's event. In addition, the uh, Berkshire Hathaway Sales Convention uh, is going to be March 10th through 12th in uh, New Orleans. The re uh, bulk registration, social registration is there. Once again, if you want to register for this, contact Laura Chehi. Chehi. Am I saying that correct? Chehi. Chehi. Um, who is Rod's assistant, and she will take care of getting you registered. Testimonial tree. Um, this is now live as of January 1st. We are switching testimonial um, services for a variety of different reasons. We can do more with this, and I have some bullet uh, points here 
that will tell you what we will be able to do with this, what we couldn't with some of the uh, older things that we do. We, by the way, we use this, um, we use your client's email address that we pull off of the TSR. We pulled off the TSR. So if the email is not on the TSR, when you turn in your transaction, uh, they will not get this uh, email from testimonial tree. I know even in the past, I've had people um, contact me and say, hey, my client wants to leave me a testimonial and um, they never got the email uh, for this. And I'll do a little bit of digging and investigation and sure enough on the TSR, there's no email. So that's one of the things that we use the email address for. So it's important that that uh, be on there. Uh, the clients are going to receive the email within 24 hours after settlement. So it's fresh in their mind. Uh, you can opt in or out through your agent dashboard. Yes, you have an agent dashboard. You'll be able to find that on Home Sales Center. Okay. And the testimonials will auto post to your new BHHS website, which I will review a little bit later here. Everybody has a website that is on the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services national platform. Okay, I'll show you some screenshots of that. Um, it will also pull things from Zillow, from Google Business and Facebook Business Reviews. They'll keep it all in one place for you. I think if you go to um, Home Sales Center and click on the uh, tile, it'll give you a really nice broad overview of what the testimonial tree can do. Okay. Um, Here's the new Berkshire Hathaway Home Services website. This is a screenshot that I took yesterday. Um, everybody uh, will have this. Uh, this picture in the background rotates. So there's about, I think, three or four different views. It just keeps going around and around. Um, this is also, uh, will point back to our homesale.com webpage that everybody has. I would, uh, I make this probably plea three or four times a year. For those of you that have a picture that's long or older than about three or four years old, you may want to get a new picture taken. Uh, that way, when people meet you for the first time after looking at your website, they're not surprised at what's standing in front of them. Okay. Um, there's a uh, property search, which is right here. Uh, there's an AVM associated with this, which I'll show you a screenshot in a second. And once again, testimonial tree will funnel right into this website. Um, here's the AVM section. All you're doing is this, uh, and I went through this myself, plugged in uh, a, a, a property that I knew, and I was on my website. And literally within two minutes, I had an email saying somebody was on um, your website, your BHHS website, and they're looking for information on this. So it's pretty fluid. It's pretty nice. Uh, I would highly encourage you to get on there, take a look, uh, see what it has to offer. It also has a whole section on Lancaster because you're Lancaster agents. So you can click through to a lot of different links having to do with Lancaster and Lancaster County. Dot loop 2.0 is coming. Um, and a lot of hair on the back of people's necks stand up uh, because everybody says, well, I like the 1.0 that we have. Uh, trust me, uh, we've been exposed to this for probably 30 days or so. When I say we, the management team, we've been asked to kind of play around with it. I know I've been reviewing transactions online um, it's coming up on January 17th. There were some bugs in it, and there are some things in there that uh, I had to toggle back to the old 1.0 to get done, but hopefully these things are being rectified as it goes along. Uh, there are some things that you can do with this that you couldn't do with the previous dot loop. Uh, first of all, it's very easy to navigate. One of the problems that I always had with dot loop is you have a long list of 25, 30 documents and agents, you guys are agents, I'm an agent too, you typically don't label them very well. 
Um, so you have this one that says addendum. And then there's like seven addendums underneath and they're all labeled addendum. Uh, so as a manager, I end up going, oh my God, I get into this one and I open the whole thing up and that's not it. So I have to close it down. I need to go back in. I can tell by some of the snickers here, this has happened to you also. Uh, well, that goes away with 2.0 in that all of the your documents are over here, one-liners on the left-hand side. And when you click it, it opens up here what the document looks like. So you can literally go down the list of those six addendums that you have, and you can find the right one in literally about 10, 15 seconds. Whereas before, you're toggling back and forth. So that's a big, huge advantage. Upload other file types. Um, a lot of people didn't know this because Janice would constantly field these questions from people trying to load pictures into uh, dot loop. And Janice would have to say, you can't load a JPEG into dot loop. Uh, you now can load JPEGs into dot loop. You can load Word files, JPEGs, PNGs, you name it. There's a whole bunch of things that you can load into it now. A caveat, when it goes into dot loop, it changes it to a PDF. So if you are loading a JPEG into it, it's going to turn into a PDF, but it, you can still get it in very, very easily. Okay, And I've tried it. Um, the document search is global across all templates. One of the other things that I would run into from time to time is when you would search for a, a uh, uh, some kind of document, not a document, when you'd search for a form in PIR forms, you had to first click all forms from PA first, and then you can search for it. If you didn't do that, it wouldn't show up. Well, now if you just type in seller's property disclosure, it goes through that long list of, of files. Uh, so you don't have to be as specific as you did in the past. Uh, share routing of document packages. So I know a lot of people in the past, you'd send it out to the husband, he would sign, comes back, then you'd send it out to the wife, she would sign, then you'd have to send it out to the attorney, and you can handle all that with just one click here. All you have to do is put the people in order, click go, and it goes to Chris first, then it goes to Daryl, then it goes to Carol, as soon as all these people sign. So you can save time in that regards. Um, talked about that. Um, there is gonna be some training on this. Like <clears throat> most training that's available, I hate to say this on camera and recording, I usually don't take these technical trainings because I like to just play around. Um, I found that I got in here, I could find everything fairly easily. I could figure it out because I'm used to dot loop 1.0. Uh, so things weren't exactly the same, but I didn't have too much problem. But we are offering training sessions on dot loop 2.0. Yeah, Chris. So documents that are in bright, like the seller's disclosure, and those kinds of things that have to be signed with your contract. <clears throat> Do we still, are we still gonna have to download and upload and, into bright and then upload into well you, you're so i'm writing a contract i've mm -hmm. got to pull the con the the seller's disclosure from from bright mm -hmm. and i have i can't email it or can i email it now to dot loop instead of having to download it onto my computer and then uploading it into dot loop is that a possibility. I want to make sure I understand your question. What I think I heard you say, the answer is no. Okay. Um, I still think the same. it's still the same. You have okay. to download you have to download documents from other sites okay. onto a hard drive unless it's in your email. If it's in your email, right. you can you use the email right. thing, but you, you can't, you can't do that from correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Shame. Sorry. <laughs> We're getting there. That's hey, that's um, dot loop 3.0. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to remind you uh, about our media kits. We are now in 2024. Uh, some people are looking to upgrade their marketing uh, to have a fresh new look on their uh, uh, on their marketing for 2024. 
we offer some really, really good media kits uh, for both agents and teams you may want to take a look at. Also, because we are at the beginning of the year, I just want to remind you, we have holiday drip campaigns. There's a total of 16 holidays that are preloaded into the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services website. All you got to do is set it up one time and it takes over for the balance of the year. Now, you do have to download contacts into the website so it knows who to email them to. Okay, But that is available also. Um, we also made it easy to support the Sunshine Kids on an individual basis this year. Uh, it's been available, but it's never really been promoted too much. Uh, there is a Sunshine Kids tab that is on Home Sale Center. And if you go there, you can say to, you can say, hey, I'd like for every settlement that I have this year, I'd like X amount of dollars or I'd like X percent sent to or held back for the Sunshine Kids. So it's real easy to do. A lot of people have asked in the past. I know we get involved with all these projects where, you know, uh, uh, basket bingo. Am I saying that correct? Basket bingo? Yes? No? Designer handbag. Something like that. Um, a lot of... A lot of people get involved with those and they volunteer their time, but then they want to do something extra. So this is an opportunity for you to do that. Okay. Um, I handled this probably six months ago, but I'm not going to go, all right, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth than I did six months ago on this. Market trends report on RPR. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up and I'm trying to, I don't believe there's anybody in this room. When our monthly stats come out, which, by the way, Adnella does now for us, so thank you, Adnella. When our monthly stats come out, I typically have probably three or four agents get in touch with me and say, this is great. However, I'm about to talk to somebody in Chester County, and Lancaster County stats don't help. Can I get Chester County stats? Or can I get Lebanon? Or can I get York? I typically get that, and I can produce them. But once again, it's for the entire county of York, the entire county of Lancaster. So if you want something outside of Lancaster, heads up here, and if you want something in Lancaster that's very specific to a certain area, this is really, really sharp. Um, it's called the Market Trends Report. It's in RPR for those of you who haven't been in RPR in a while. You may have to remember your username and password. Uh, but this is the home screen. This is a new section called research, and you want to click on residential market trends. Residential market trends. Once you do that, you will have a line that you can type in virtually anything. Uh, I typed on this one, Mannheim Township, because I wanted to get what was located in the Manham Township. You can segregate this by zip code. You can segregate it by neighborhood. So if you wanted something in Bloomingdale, type in Bloomingdale, and it's going to give you all the market trends in Bloomingdale. Okay. Once you do that, you will have literally, you can scroll down and scroll down. There are probably, I would say, 25 different market trends for that specific area. Now, this, once again, is coming up from Manham Township. The very first thing it tells you is, what kind of market are we in right now? Are we in a seller's market in Manham Township? Is it balanced? Are we in a buyer's market? It's pretty sharp. You can also click, these are tabs. There's a median list price, number of properties, medium uh, price per square foot. If you click on each one of these, and there's probably 30 to 40 of these, it's going to give you a graph on what has happened with that trend over time. You can set that also, I believe. Yep. Uh, like I set this for two years. You can set it for one year, three years, or the entire time that RPR was pulling this information. So if you have somebody in Manham Township that you'd like to do a market report for because you're trying to take a listing, this is a really, really neat thing, okay? 
they can you can share with them what's going on. Um, if you want to share this, uh, these charts on social media, you can. All you're doing is clicking a share button, which is covered up over here. But you can share it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And when it says more, there's other things that you can share it to. It's very easy. It's a one-click thing. You can print this report. Uh, the report itself is five pages long. And you can create a script for yourself. So here's what I did. I pulled up Manham Township and I said, do me a favor, give me a script of how to talk to buyers and sellers about what I'm giving them. Pass that around. This took, once again, there's AI that's built into RPR. So you can use this in a couple of different ways. And I know some of you people in this room, I've seen it, you do some of this stuff and then you get on you know, a 45 second video and you're posting it to your business page and you don't really know what to say. Um, this tells you what to say. It's using the information from that report and putting it into a script for you. Obviously, this is a Word document. You can say, I don't want this, I don't want that, I want to change this. Um, it's really, really easy. So all I wanted to do was draw your attention to it so that you understood it exists out there. And where did I put my clicker? <laughs> there it is. Um, it's available to you. They keep adding things to RPR. And every time they add something to it, I'm like, God, I can't believe how much they're, they're adding to this. So that's market trends report in RPR. There's the script writer. You can select from professional, engaging, or conversational. You can select buyers and sellers, buyers or sellers as your audience. And then where's this going? Is it a video that you're going to shoot? Is it a social campaign? Is it going to get really technical and analyze the metrics? You can play around with it. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. How does it do the video? No, you do the video, Bob. Sorry, it hasn't gone that far. But for you, what I hear from a lot of people is, I got all this great information, but I don't know what to say when I'm on video. This tells you what to say when you're on video. You you have to shoot your own video, Bob. I'm sorry. You're just doing that off the camera on your laptop or whatever. That's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for those of you that are interested in doing that, I can show you how to do it. I have a... I have a stuff on my cell phone and on this that it's real easy to do. Okay. Um, can you map an area to get yep. the stat? Like if I wanted to like yep. a little squared area. Yep. Okay. okay. Know. That's pretty cool. But it, if you do, uh, like you said, a development, if, if the agent, when they put it in the right, it doesn't put it in, it's not going to show up. That is correct. It's it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you took a listing in Bloomingdale, to use an example, and you didn't put in Bloomingdale under development, it ain't going to show up. But, you know. But if you do a map. But if you do a map, if you do a map, it's going to show up. Yeah. It's a way to get around the people that are dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the U.S. real estate market, and I, I'm going to get this back to Brenda. Brenda, do you want to paraphrase your text that you sent to me, or are you going to read it off? What's that? Wait a minute. I didn't say that. No, it's okay. Here, you're going to go live on, on Zoom. <laughs> Tom, what the heck is going on with NAR? Makes me sad and a little mad. See you in the morning. I'm sure we'll discuss. Okay. So if you don't like this segment, you can blame it on Brenda. <laughs> um, so this is what Brenda was referring to. So she just became an NAR president about three to four months ago because of a, a scandal that occurred at NAR 
and now she's resigned also. So two presidents of NAR have resigned in the span of three to four months. So now you have a president who is taking over that wasn't even elected yet at this point in time. And that's another story. But my point is this. This is a sensational headline. If you read the story, this woman has a lot of class. Tons of class. She has basically, somebody sent something to her and basically pulled something from her past. We don't know what that is at this point in time. Pulled something from her past that was probably to her embarrassing and uh, was going to blackmail her and basically told her, we want you to do certain things at NAR for our cause. Now, I'm speculating at this point in time. I believe over the next 12 to 24 months, you're going to see tons of this. Our industry, if you look at the real estate industry, we contribute more to GDP than any other industry out there, by far. It's not even close, the real estate industry and all the, you know, the, the photographers and you name it. And it's being assaulted in the court systems right now. There's a lot of big players that are scared because their livelihood is based upon what happens in the real estate market. Okay. So do I think this is going to continue to happen? Absolutely. Because there is a lot of money in this industry in a lot of different areas. Uh, I actually, even though it doesn't look good, I tip my hat to her. If you read the article, and I encourage you to read it, she basically says, I will not drag NAR through this. Um, NAR is such a good organization. I'm very happy with it, but I don't want this to stand in the way of us making progress in our industry and at NAR. So I tip my hat to her. Um, but if you look at these sensational headlines, it doesn't look good. You know, anytime you read blackmail, that sounds horrible. Okay. Uh, now she turned it over to the uh, authorities and who knows where this is going to go at this point in time. So I believe it's actually a good thing that this happened. Um, it's unfortunate, but I believe it's good. And I think there's going to be more of this because there's a lot of money at play here. Here is one big, mm -hmm. with a lot of money at play. This just happened about two weeks ago. Uh, Zillow, I'm going to go to my next thing. Zillow, as you might recall, back in 2021, February, they tendered an agreement for showing time. And the entire real estate market, including agents, went ballistic. They said, now Zillow's got their hands in everything. Then in October of 2021, the sale was approved by the government. So Zillow now owns showing time. And everybody went crazy and still is going crazy. At that time, as you recall, many MLSs said, this is the only showing service that we have. We're gonna start creating our own services. Now, it's harder than you think. Keep in mind, this was in 2021. We're now in 2024. Bright even said, we're gonna create our own showing service. How's that working out so far? Hasn't even, so it's a lot harder than it looks. And then this happened. Um, the Arizona Regional Multiple Listing Service and the Metro MLS, which is a large MLS in Wisconsin, created something called Aligned Showings, which is a showing service. And when they did that, they dropped showing time. And Zillow got pissed. And Zillow sued them. Now, this is going to happen probably over the next couple of months. But think about this. This is a lot of money. Think about this blackmail thing that we just talked about here. Zillow is losing control of showing time. Because I believe this year, Bright's probably going to have an alternate to showing time also. 
if you think about it, Zillow, how does Zillow make their money? By and large, stealing. <laughs> how are they making money? Who's paying them? Agents are paying them. Agents are paying them for what? Leads. What type of leads? <laughs> what type of leads? Buyers. What's this whole lawsuit about? If this lawsuit goes through, which you'll see in a second, there's a guy with an alternate opinion here. If this lawsuit goes through in two, three years, what happens to Zillow overnight? It goes away. Mm -hmm. Do you think Zillow has a vested interest in what's going on here? Why would they do this unless they know that they're losing control? All right. This is happening now, and you're going to see more of this stuff over the next 12 to 24 months because people and companies are afraid they're losing control of their business. Now, having said all that, I'm going to share with you this interview. Um, we're not going to watch the whole thing. We're going to watch about 15 minutes worth. Um, with a guy by the name of Dave Stevens. I was chatting with Dan earlier. Uh, I asked Dan when he got in the real estate uh, business, the mortgage side of it. Dan, have you remembered <laughs> when you got into the business? <laughs> I spent about five minutes trying to figure out where, what he was saying. Uh, so this guy's been around for 40 years. Uh, his name's Dave Stevens. Uh, he is the past senior vice president of single family lending at Freddie Mac, exec, uh, past executive vice president of Wells Fargo Wholesale Lending Division. He ran Long and Foster at one time. Uh, needless to say, this guy has done a lot in this industry. Now, this video I'm going to show you is by a mortgage guy. I follow this guy uh, who's usually pretty negative about real estate agents. And you'll see in the beginning, he tries to lead Dave down the path of these real estate agents are getting what they deserve. And during the course of the interview, listen to what Dave says. He basically says what I keep telling you, and you know. This is a hard, hard business. Okay. Hey guys, Brian Stevens here with Real Estate Post. I have Dave Stevens, uh, whose resume speaks for itself. I think everybody knows Dave. If you'd like to contact Dave, his information is anywhere around this video. Dave, how are we doing today? We're good, Brian. Good to be with you again, as always. Yeah. Long time no talk. A lot's happened since we spoke last. Yes, just a bit. Yeah, you know, the, the the big one, and it's kind of, um, I think we've kind of seen this one on the horizon for quite some time, is everything that's taken place with NAR or multiple listing systems and some of the large brokers out there. Uh, my thinking is, is lawyers sue. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And I can't see a good ending for NAR or the large brokers. I think they're going to find themselves in lawsuits for the foreseeable future. Is that an accurate statement? And what do you think is going to happen? They're definitely in lawsuits. As we all know, there's been some piggyback lawsuits. I mean, full disclosure, Brian, um, I'm an expert witness in these cases. I was in Missouri uh, for the big case that they lost on, okay. um, testifying on how it would impact the mortgage banking industry. But I testified that Thursday, they did closing arguments on Friday and the jury came back on Tuesday morning. Oh, yeah. um, they only deliberated for two and a half hours in total. They looked at literally no review of the testimony or the evidence presented. It's almost like they were uninterested. And that leads a lot of the lawyers involved to believe that they could be successful on appeal. Uh, the difference between a the problem with the jury trial, when it gets to technical sort of complicated buyer broker agreements and how the real estate industry works and um, all of the accusations that were coming out is many of them were not even homeowners uh, on that jury. And um, there's a there's a general feeling amongst the legal firms involved that when you put this in front of a, an appellate court, which is where it's going next, that an appeals court judge will rule on the evidence and nothing more uh, and the arguments and they won't be subject to being bored or, uh, you know, 
just not wanting to pay attention or whatever. The, 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 sh the extraordinarily short duration after weeks of trial, uh, again, two and a half hours, with literally no request to review any of the evidence provided before they made their decision is an indicator to some uh, that this uh, jury may not be the best predictor about what happens over the long term. But nevertheless, you know, we know we already know there's a, a suit in Illinois. Um, I'm in I'm right now currently uh, I've been deposed in that and I'm supposed to be an expert witness in that, which that case will be heard next fall. But there's other cases popping up around the country. So. Yes, it's messy. My big concern, Brian, honestly, and for everybody listening, is too many real estate professionals view themselves as experts. Uh, there's a lot more realtors than there are loan officers. And uh, opinions right now abound over this case. And a lot of realtors are trainers and they're in the business and they're, they have reputations. And so for whatever reason, it's believed that when they come up with an opinion on this case, um, that somehow they have facts that other people don't have. The truth is most of them aren't lawyers. Most of them were not in Missouri with me and the others uh, fighting the case. And I will tell you that these real estate firms have uh, some of the most powerful legal firms representing them in the country. So I would just say my only suggestion is keep your powder dry. Don't over lean into all the opinions out there. Opinions are like, oh, I'm not going to say what they are, but the, everyone has you one. Know. <laughs> and um in the end of the day, I think this thing's going to take a while to play out. This this appeal alone could take as long as two years. So I would just suggest that people just turn off the noise because it's freaking realtors out in particular, as you know. Yeah. And um, I've done a lot of uh, events for large mortgage lenders who are inviting the realtor partners. And we've had, you know, thousand plus realtors on these calls. They can't get enough of just the calm and sense that says guys just don't stop reading the opinions in some of the trade rags they're they're is they're the biggest guesses there are and built on the least amount of fact and so from that standpoint i would just say we got a long a long fight here but nevertheless to your point brian yeah there are a lot of suits popping up a lot of mirror actions to the the ones that were filed no question about it so it's going to be expensive and it's going to be messy for a while Okay, but you're the expert witness, so you can have an opinion here. Now, is this, so I, I think what I hear you saying is that you disagree with um, the verdict on here. And I, I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this kind of seems to me like it's more an indictment of the industry as a whole than it is uh, being factually accurate or or, or they should have been uh, found guilty of what they've been accused of here. I, do, you, do you disagree with the verdict on this? Uh, I got to be careful what I say. So just to be clear, the unfortunate reality is I'm restricted a little bit about how open I can speak okay. on this case or the ones coming forward. But I would tell you this, that to think that, you know, a million individual real estates in this country are experts at colluding with each other is pretty difficult for me to swallow. Right. Uh, the big real estate firms recruit from each other constantly. There's no obligation that anybody pay 6% to sell their home or 5% or whatever the number is. There are discount brokerages that have tried, haven't always made it, but they have tried. My core fundamental point starts from this basis, which is if you're a first time home buyer, which is right now almost half of the buying population, going out to buy a home, the most expensive decision you're ever gonna make, how are you gonna do this if you don't have professional representation, right? You, are you gonna start having to call every individual listing agent to find out if you can come preview their home for sale? Right. Um, cause don't forget you have a full-time job. You have family to take care of and all this. Got a lot of time you now have to invest if you're not going to have someone doing the previews for you, understanding your, your needs and desires in the home you want to buy all of the, those variables, knowing what's overpriced based on a website portal and oversold that may be sitting on a steep lot or back into a railroad track. I mean, these are the things that, uh, the internet portals don't show you. And so there's value in that. And then when it comes to time to making the offer, how do you know what offer to put in? Do you go at full price, list price? You have to go above list price in a seller's market. Do you come in below list price if the market's soft? What about conditions? What about the home inspection? If it shows up various things, can't even put in requests that the seller make those payments. And keep in mind, if 
if this settlement in Missouri, this case in Missouri becomes the law of the land, let's say that years down the road, and uh, we begin to look more like the United Kingdom or Australia, you're going to have only one person represented professionally in a transaction. And that's going to be the seller. And so in the end of the day, um, you'll have that listing agent representing the property and the minnow being thrown into the shark tank without anybody by his or her side to help them through the process. I, I think there's a, I think there's a real risk of unfair consumer treatment by not having uh, a financed expert rec, uh, representing you when you buy a home. Okay. Not okay. everybody need, not everybody needs one necessarily, but I I personally think that's a core argument here, and we'll just see how this plays out when we go through the uh, appellate court. Okay, so let me answer your question here, or what your statement that you just said. You said, well, are you really going to go in there and put an offer on an house and not have representation? Do you go above or do you go below? Can you really do this without a professional? And here's what I would say, that there are forces at play that are heavily funded by uh, Wall Street private equity firms who are who are positioning themselves as alternatives to real estate agents, uh, who all these companies have market cap rates that loop every real estate company in the country, who took a run at the real estate industry just a couple of short years ago, failed miserably at it, have yeah. now regrouped. And I it, what it appears to me that the byproduct of this, if it works, is it creates a void and in that vacuum will be filled an alternative to real estate agents, which are a lot of these fintech companies, which are heavily funded. And they're frankly, they're more expensive alternative to real estate agents. It seems like it's working out perfectly for them. It almost looks as if this is by design and we don't have to go too far with these fintech companies to see that well, they- well, let, let, let me just okay. suggest, let me suggest this. Okay. What you just said is part of that speculation, right? We don't know. You know, we, we don't know if some fintech firm is going to come in and fill that void, as it were. They sure as heck don't do it in Australia and the United Kingdom, which were markets that some of the lawyers on the uh, plaintiff side used as example markets of how the system can function. They don't have high tech providers coming in, filling that void. Look, I'm, I've been in this business 40 years. This is my 40th year. I started in 1983. I, I have a pretty good deep resume, right? Including running one of the largest real estate companies in the nation, Long & Foster, yep. uh, with 11,000 real estate agents at one point. I bought, my wife and I bought 14 or maybe 15 homes. I can't even keep count uh, in our lives. I use a professional real estate agent every single time yep. and I'm in the business. Why? because they know the story of the listing. They know what homes sold in the area. They can help me with comps. They understand what the seller will will, will accept depending on market conditions um, and whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market. They help me walk through the home inspection and what's doable, what's not doable if we go ask uh, for conditions to be repaired or, or fixed. Um, all of that and, and more importantly, the initial screening process of, of going through all the homes that are being pushed on the internet web portals this to, that all look like they're fantastic homes. I remember my wife and I were buying a home in Northwest DC many years ago. And uh, when I worked in the Obama administration, but we were buying a home in Northwest Washington and we started going out, looking them up on the internet and driving by, we drive by the home and go, whoa, that's rough even though it looked fantastic on the internet, we realized very quickly, I don't have the time. I have a full-time job. I don't have the ability to do the work that an expert can do for me. I am not sure how, I'm not gonna name the company, but I'm not sure how a well-funded FinTech is gonna come in with uh, some sort of virtual capability to be able to use artificial intelligence and help me identify that home, choose the offer, et cetera. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not, but I would, really encourage everybody not to take the leap from where the system operates today to it's going to be like that because we don't have it now unless someone can show me one that really works i still remain pretty incredulous to the outcome that many people are thinking this is going to be i i uh, i'm just curious to see will, will it mean that in some markets we're going to see listings where the seller is not the seller agent, a listing agent is not providing buyer broker compensation. Yeah, we'll see that. We're already seeing some. And I, those markets are generally pure seller's markets. Homes are selling at or above list price, multiple offers sold in, in a number of hours, typically, where you really don't need the value necessarily of a buyer broker. Right. And my, my only caution to everybody is be careful if you throw the baby out with the bathwater because someday we're going to be back to a, a buyer's market. Yep. And that, that seller is going to need every possible potential buyer coming to that house to look at it. And uh, the efficiencies that the current system offers is pretty good. 
we're complaining about two or three percent, whatever the buyer broker commission is. Even the law firm argued, the law firm representing the plaintiffs against the builder firms said that they expect that the buyer broker commission would drop from an average of 3% today to 1.6% in the absence of forced buyer brokerage. That ain't a lot of a drop to take away professional representation to those who need it the most. Wealthy folks who want a professional realtor, you know, take, doing all the research for them, et cetera, they can stroke the check, no big deal. But at every first time home buyer right now is getting down payment yep. assistance and desperately scraping together every penny they can uh, to buy that home with their dreams. Yep. Now expected to come up with a couple of percent additional to get a professional representative. I, I don't like the outcome. So I, I still I still remain arguing for the plaintiffs. And guys, I'm no huge fan of big behemoth real estate companies. I don't care. I am right. a fan of the individual independent contractor, professional real estate agent yes. who knows that community yep. and knows that market. And by the way, works for an average in the United States today of $49,000 a year. That's yep. what the average income is for a real estate agent. You know, if someone thinks that's like a easy pay job and a, and a get rich quick scheme, the way this commission structure is set up, they don't understand what they're talking about. So um, all I would say right now is let's take a bit of a pause pill Let's not pile on the real estate business before we know what we have to replace it with and right. see how this plays out. Right, and by the way, just, just real quickly, these FinTech firms are currently actively and have been for quite some time positioning and marketing themselves as alternatives. If it's gonna happen or not, I don't know, but that's what they're saying, the forward facing. And, and you're right, a real estate agent on average, our commissions fluctuate, they always go up and down, so I don't know how it's price fixing. And in hot markets, like you suggested, um, we've always had the discount brokers out there who've participated in, in the industry. So it's we've always seen kind of the ups and downs on this. So your belief then is, is that in most markets, that we think that there's still going to be a place for real estate agents if this verdict is upheld and if these lawsuits persist. Well, I don't know how the long term plays out, Brian. Honestly, um, sure. I've been I've been involved in these cases now for well over two years. Uh, I've written expert witness statements that are 40 pages long each. I've analyzed the markets in the United Kingdom and Australia. I've had with the lawyers involved, I've, I've set up calls with companies in both of those markets. The reason why is there's virtually no buyer representation in those markets. But I also believe that those markets favor the wealthy. And I believe that firmly. And so I don't know how this ultimately plays out. I think the question is, will the appeals process prevail in the Missouri case? That's gonna be a real telltale sign for us because I think all the other cases get more difficult with the ruling in the Missouri court until the Missouri court ruling is is challenged. Because right now you have a precedent, right? The precedent is that ruling. Uh, and it, until that ruling gets challenged through the appellate court, and if by chance it's defeated or modified, then the whole game changes a little bit further. So we just have to see how it plays out. And guys, I am no lawyer. I've worked around for way too many of them for the last couple of years on this case. But I, uh, I, I, that's why I just think, will it all change? I don't know. I worry that the disruption effect would be harmful. I think we have the best system in the nation, uh, in the world for buying and selling, transacting in real estate, in, which is the United States system. I think our only biggest problem are corporate equity firms, private, private firms coming in and buying up a lot of the real estate supply, but that's being dealt with through another set of actions. But I would just say in the end of the day, I believe our system works better than those in Europe and in Australia. And you can't compare it solely on things like home ownership rates because we have a very unique social environment in the United States. We have a country built on slavery. And uh, so we have a very uh, deferred home ownership rate for African Americans in particular and Hispanics, which the other countries don't have to deal with in terms of H home ownership rates in total. But I think the reality is our system has worked pretty damn good. And for everybody to suddenly pile on and say, I don't want to pay that 2%, but please give me the 2 1 buy down and let me pay, you know, $2,500 in title insurance for my home. Uh, I just think we're focusing on the wrong things. I, I think we need to. All right. So I would encourage you to watch the balance of this. This is really, really good. He starts talking about, and he touched on it here, how this is going to affect uh, home buyers who can't afford this. Who can't afford this and one thing that he gets into here which i hadn't even thought about until i saw this interview 
is that there's this thing called disparate effect, which is if you have a situation where you implement a policy and it affects one class over another, it's called disparate effect. And what he gets into in greater detail as he goes through here is, by and large, if you look at the population of the United States, the minority community makes less money. By and large, that's a fact, makes less money. And it's going to affect the minority community much greater than the majority community. And that in and of itself is enough for the government to step in and say, this is disparate effect and you're affecting that portion of the population. Uh, now, whether that, you know, wh whether you buy that argument or not, I thought it was a very interesting uh, way to present it. Uh, he goes on to talk about mortgage rates and for Dan and James who probably soak that stuff up. We do too, but they, they to a, a greater degree. Uh, the whole thing's about a half hour long. He gets into a lot of different things, but I thought it was enlightening. Uh, you saw the mortgage officer, and he this guy is a mortgage officer, the, the guy that's doing the interview. He was pounded on it. Uh, and David just kept coming back and saying, you don't get it. This is hard. This is hard. This is really a difficult business. So this is 20, and we'll end with it. This is 2023. I'll have PDF copies of this to give to you. These are the top 10 real estate companies in Lancaster County. Um, we do this every year. Uh, I know a lot of people like this because they use it in their listing presentations. Uh, we, Berkshire Hathaway, we had a very good year again, a very good year again. We sell more real estate than number two and number three combined. Okay. The other thing that I, I garnered from this, and I looked from previous years, this is the top 10. Anybody know how many real estate companies sold real estate in Lancaster County? 100. 30 plus? 100. You're way, way short, Logan. You're way, way short. It's in the 300s. Now, granted, some of these companies are based in Berks County and Lebanon County, but they sell in Lancaster County, okay? But if you add up the percentages here of the top 10, 70% of the transactions occur within the top 10. And there's 300 companies that are selling in Lancaster County. So it says a lot about us and the people that are in the top 10. So once again, I will give this to you as a PDF when I send out the, uh, when I send out the uh, uh, video and other things here.